Hi, Sam Roberts here for ProRaster Scientific. Um, so ProRaster version 2.2.13 has been released and is now in store. So let's take a look at some of the features. Uh, so firstly, looking at the um, raster rendering interface. Um, so we've always had a list of the most recently accessed MRD files. They're your rendering algorithms. Um, but we now remember uh, uh, rasters as well. So we have a list of the recent rasters that you've accessed either by browsing or dragging and dropping. And we have a list of the recent output rasters which you've generated from a processing operation. So if you've output a raster from a processing operation, it will go into this list. And also we have this list of uh, recent um, multispectral satellite product algorithms that you've pushed across, across from the product editor uh, into the rendering interface and they're remembered as well. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just load up a, a raster here. This is a classified raster. Um, now on the um, tooltip reporting mode button, there's a new, a new mode and it's called key plus all data table. Uh, so you might recall that you can double click uh, anywhere on a map and it'll give you this point value report and you'll get a whole bunch of uh, information. So there's a new feature in this that if you double click on a classified raster uh, then it will pick out the band values uh, of all bands from the classification table in that raster and, all, and they'll go into that report. Now in addition you can ch click on this new mode the key plus all data table and then as you move the um, your, uh, your cursor around, it'll show you the key data value, which for a classified raster is usually a, um, a label, uh, but it'll also show you this table over here, um, and this has got all the bands uh, in the classified table displayed, and so as you move around you can see all that band data, as well as the band name, field, and the raster that it came from. Um, also, if uh, if you're familiar with this mode, the all data information mode, um, if, you're, uh, if you move this around, um, this will also be reflected in the table and you'll see all those band values shown in that table. So uh, they're the new features in rendering. So in multispectral earth observation imagery, if we go to the browse scenes dialog, um, you have this map which shows you um, uh, the scenes that are in your database and you can uh, double click and, and collapse the database down to scenes that you've selected and so forth. Well, we now also allow you to preview these scenes in this map. So if I right click on a uh, scene, I come down here and go switch to scene preview. And it'll ask me, um, comes up with this little dialogue which you might be familiar with. It'll ask you what band combination you want to use. So say this one. You can turn on pan sharpening if you want to. And you can turn on masking. And so you get a preview then of, um, of, this, of the scene. So this is not just some uh, little JPEG or something preview of the scene. It's actually the scene data. And you can zoom and pan around in here and um, and dive right down to the uh, cell level for your multispectral data. And then as you um, come down into the spreadsheet and you move from one scene to the next, um, it will update. You can right click and go modify scene preview and change that to some other band combination. Um, and, uh, and you can also do that down here, modify scene preview. Secondly, you can change it to a spectral index. So you switch to spectral index and then choose a spectral index either from this list of the standard indices or you can come down and choose some more obscure index from this larger list. We'll just choose the vegetation index. Uh, and there we have the vegetation index displayed. And again, as we move from one to the next, it will change to reflect that uh, vegetation index for that scene. And again, this is not just some preview. You can zoom right in uh, into your original data. 
Um, and then once you want to go back to your map, just go switch back to scene map and you'll go back to your map. Um, so that's in the, um, in the Earth observation side of things. Uh, now going into the processing side of things. Firstly, the export image option has been moved onto the processing menu in ProRaster Scientific. It used to be, well, it used to be a big button, uh, then it turned into a small button, uh, and now it's here uh, on the processing menu. Um, secondly, we have a new classify polygons operation. So I'll show you this in a different video, but this is a mechanism which allows you to go from a set of vector polygons stored in a map info table uh, and basically convert the entire table, uh, preserving all of the uh, data columns that are in that table and put it into a complicated um, or uh, MRR format classified raster. So this is not a virtual raster, it actually produces a um, a physical raster. Um, so you select your table file. Um, where do we got here? Queensland Rural Property Boundaries, something like that. Uh, shows you all the columns. You can select the columns you want. You assign, for example, this name. I might want to assign that as the label. Um, you can do a query to um, to select only certain parts of the uh, of that tab file. And then you set the cell size and you can set the origin and uh, the output raster will be to MRR format and it will go and generate a classified raster for you. And the idea is to, to be able to produce very high resolution classified rasters um, from, from polygonal data sets. So we'll show that, that in a separate video. Um, and secondly, on, um, on the processing menu, you'll see there's a new button here. Click this down and you'll get access to the recent raster list and the recent output raster list. So if you uh, want to select a raster that you've already, um, as an input that you've used before, you can just go straight to that list. And then if you go to your destination, your output file, it'll give you the list of recent rasters. So if you're repeating a, an operation and you want to overwrite the file that you created before, you just go and select it from this list. Um, and, and also if you're doing, if you're chaining operations together and you want the input to your new operation to be the output from the previous operation, well, you'll find it in here and you can just use it as the input. And that's across all of the processing dialogues. So they're the new features in ProRaster Scientific. Thanks for watching.